Nearly half the vehicles leaving manufacturers' assembly lines are using gasoline direct injection to introduce the fuel charge into the combustion chamber. And if you're used to port fuel injection, there are some differences between the two that you need to be aware of. So stick around, we're gonna cover them today on Service Done Right. In a port injected engine, a single fuel pump supplies the needed fuel to the injectors, which are mounted in the intake manifold. In early models of port injected engines, the system was allowed to return fuel to the tank that wasn't needed by the engine. But engineers soon adopted the idea of a returnless system, opting instead to control fuel delivery by controlling the fuel pump using a pulse width modulated signal that was sent to it by the ECM and a fuel rail pressure sensor on the rail as a feedback to the control module. Now I'm sure you're familiar with how the ECM controls the fuel charge in a port fuel injected engine. The first thing it has to do is accurately measure the amount of air getting into the engine. Based on that, it can then calculate the amount of fuel to add in order to maintain a stoichiometric ratio. Now the stoichiometric ratio doesn't say anything about fuel pressure or injector pulse width. It's strictly a comparison of weight, 14.7 pounds of air to one pound of fuel. So how does the ECM make the correct determination? Well, it knows that a given pressure and an injector flow rate, how much fuel will be delivered per millisecond. It does the calculations and then delivers that amount of fuel, that volume, if you will, based on the amount of on time it allows the injector to remain open. In a GDI system, the process is similar, but different in that Volume is still the main concern. We still have to deliver a certain amount of fuel into the combustion chamber, but different in that the amount of time we have to do that is extremely limited because we're delivering the fuel right at the point of combustion. So we can't leave the injector on for any long length of time. So how do we vary the amount of fuel? By varying the pressure that the fuel is being delivered under. This is accomplished through the use of a secondary pump the high pressure pump. The high pressure pump uses a plunger style piston that operates on two cycles, suction and compression. A solenoid on the side of the pump, the fuel volume control valve or fuel pressure control valve, controls how much fuel is compressed during the compression stroke. As the piston moves down, the control valve will allow fuel from the low pressure side of the system to enter the pump. As the piston starts to travel upwards, the control valve will remain open and the piston will push fuel back into the low pressure side of the system. When the solenoid is shut, the low pressure and high pressure side of the fuel system are isolated. When fuel demand is low, for example, while the engine is idling, the fuel volume control valve will not close until much later in that piston stroke leaving only a small amount of fuel above the piston before the chamber is sealed. Once sealed, the plunger will finish its way up on the upward stroke, pressurizing that small amount of fuel to a pressure of around 300 to 500 PSI. And when fuel is in greater demand, the fuel volume control valve will close much sooner, keeping a greater volume of fuel above the pump. Now the pump's upward movement will pressurize that to a much higher figure, in some cases as high as 2,500 PSI or more. These systems are best assessed using a factory scan tool or an aftermarket scan tool with enhanced capability. If you don't have either, you may still wanna check your global OBD2 PID list to see if you have the data parameters you need to still carry out the diagnosis. Now, just like its port fuel injected cousin, you must consider both pressure and volume being delivered by the fuel delivery system. Ask yourself some of these questions. Is the low pressure pump supplying a sufficient volume to begin with? Is the high pressure regulator working properly? Is the pump stroke correct 
or is the plunger physically damaged? Or is the plunger sealing the fuel charge, or is it allowing it to leak down into the crankcase? Both pressure and volume are key ingredients when it comes to making sure the proper amount of fuel is being delivered to the engine. Now, if your customer's pump just isn't doing the job, consider using a Carter pump as your replacement option. For more information, visit www.carterengineered.com. And thanks for watching.